welcome to your two-day late weekly lecture. Sorry about that. Um, this week we're basically going to be talking about effective source strategies and like finding and evaluating sources. Um, I'm going to preface this. I'm probably not going to be referencing the stories in the the book. So if you get a little like freaked out, like he's not just going verbatim out of the book, don't worry. It's relevant in terms of we cover the same things, but I'm just talking about stuff that actually matters to us. Um, so in the beginning, as we all know, like finding sources isn't hard, but finding good sources is. We can just go to Google and the internet and we can find all sorts of information about stuff, but whether or not like that is good information is a whole nother story and that's like the hard part for us is finding good like information and finding reliable sources like you guys will want to be evaluating and critically reading to make sure that you are assessing the writer's claims um the extent to which they provide evidence to support their claims and the recency relevancy accuracy and reliability of that evidence those sort of things are the things you want to be looking at when evaluating a, a, a source and we'll get into a little bit more of those later like i said finding sources is easy google the internet will tell you almost anything you want also encyclopedias but finding really specific stuff and finding things from multiple perspective is the hard part um let's go to the next page here um of course it always makes me double click because this is 1996 apparently um so um Identifying your sources, um, again, you know, want to, by the time you have visited a library, you want to have a research question in mind, and most of you do have topics in mind, like you have our waste management plants, like for-profit waste management plants, uh, environment, good for the environment, that sort of a thing, that's a research question that you have that's fairly narrowed in but not so narrowed in that you've already started your argument with the research going forward. Same thing with like looking at how race affects portrayal of class and popular culture. That's fairly specific, but I'm not making the argument one way or another. I just have that research topic in mind, and that's what you want to be doing when you're going in is you want to have that research question fairly small so that you have a frame of reference to where you can make keyword searches and things like that. Um, this is a table of useful sources that you can use or types of sources that you guys will be using. Um, I'll just go through them real quickly. Abstract is a brief summary of the text and a bibliographic information needed to locate uh, the complete text. Um, abstracts are what you guys will be reading a lot of. Um, to get an idea of whether or not uh, a source is um, relevant to what you want to do so that you want to read the abstract see if it's relevant so if you come up with something in your search terms and you click on it but it doesn't sound right according to the abstract that's a way to kind of throw it away abstracts are kind of that appetizer or free sample if you will like they're the Costco free sample of the the library databases you're strolling around strolling around somebody's like free sample you like take it you're like all right, I really do want these Jimmy Dean, like, explosion pork sausages. I'll take a bag. But then, yeah, anyways, that's what they are. They're just a little appetizer. They tell you what the, the essay is about and give you an idea of whether or not you want to use it. Um, a bibliography is a list of works usually by the subject and author with full publication information. Like, the bibliography or is, like, an overview of what has been published of in the field and who the principal researchers in the field are. Like... Uh, bibliography is the problem with those is that they're they're difficult to discern who the best sources are but those are where you would find all of the information um for like it's almost like a works cited the bibliography is almost like a works cited it gives you all of the information so um it's great for backtracking other sources but it's really hard in the fact that you don't know who is who unless you pay attention to the original work um a biography is a story of an individual life, historic, you know, yeah, uh, an individual's life and the historical, cultural, and social context in which they lived. Um, these are really good for, like, other projects, but for ones like you guys are doing, you probably won't be using many biographies because you won't be talking about specific people. But if you were writing an argument on, say, 
a poet or an author or something like that, a, a biography could come in handy. Um, book reviews are another thing you may read to see if a book about, say, I have books on policing. Uh, the media is one that I have. So I would have read, I could have gone and read a book review for that that gives a description and evaluation of a recently published book. So that's another way to do it if it doesn't have an abstract. Abstracts are typically for article, journal article type things. And book reviews are obviously for books. So a book review would be another version of that to where you could go look at a book review, see what the re reviewers have said about the book. But again, you can take that with a grain of salt because um, some reviewers have biases. But most, if it's like a Goodreads or it's something anybody can review on, then you might be wary. But if it's a published review in a journal of a book that's within the field you're looking at, then you might want to actually take that for, uh, um, give that some weight and look at the book. Um, databases, those are what we use. Like databases are large collections of citation and abstracts from books, journals, and then they um, have the journals themselves, like the, the, the articles themselves. So databases are something you will use, JSTOR, uh, ProQuest, that sort of thing, and we'll go to the internet here in a bit after this and go look at that. Uh, data and statistics, things that you would you could also look at too when doing research on like waste management and whether or not they're, they're um, environmentally friendly statistics that have been done on that would be something you could look at. Same with a uh, portrayal of, of say race in popular culture or in, uh, in like movies or whatever. You could use statistics that others have compiled to do that. The data and statistics, you can't just... Um, do your own, so I mean, you could do your own surveys and studies, but you're not doing that in 201, so you can't just like survey the class and use it as data in an essay, that sort of a thing. But real data and statistics are something you can use a dictionary. Um, you can uh, look at key terms and how they are used, that sort of a thing. They'll let you look up words to understand. Encyclopedias are uh, articles about people, places, concept, and things. So if you want to look up an, uh, an encyclopedia, Entry about something, that's a great starting point for a ba very basic information. Say you want to look up global warming to just get an understanding of what the concept of global warming is. You could turn to an encyclopedia for that. Start there. Build your knowledge that way. You might not really want to cite an encyclopedia unless they're, they're, they're using really specific knowledge about something. And even then, you could probably backtrack that source. Um, internet search engines, Google, Bing, all of that stuff, they locate the information they, they'll get you a lot of it. The, the reliability is um, often in question. That's the downside of it. Like Google. Google Scholar is a little better since it's scholarly articles that Google uh, catalogs in the same way. Only problem there is sometimes some of those are behind paywalls and stuff, whereas JSTOR and other ones are not. So what I sometimes do is I'll go on Google Scholar, do my search for keywords, and then I'll highlight titles of specific articles I found in there and then I'll throw them in our database to look for them if I don't want to try to fish through ours if they found it easier with their algorithms. Um, newspaper, other news sources are up-to-date information. They uh, locate timely information. They um, Downside is that can reflect a, meet, a bias from the reporters and whatnot. Um, newspapers, depending on the size and quality, would be those reliable other sources you could use, that sort of a thing. Um, a thesaurus is an alphabetical list of words. Um, for alternative search terms, that's a great way to do it. If you have, like, yeah, search terms you want to look up, go to a thesaurus, look up other words that mean that to make more um, things. Consult experts who can, like, this is a great thing. Um, I'll help you as best I can. Library is always there. You can ask them questions. Um, yeah, we'll help you guide your searches as best you can. Librarians, campus, you have to usually um, get a hold of them through email now since COVID. Um, experts in the other fields you could look at too. So say um, you're looking at um, something with the environment. You could totally go to an environmental science teacher if that's somebody you've taken and go, ask them some questions um manuals handbooks and dedicated websites to those certain things you can totally use those too they um, exist in abundance for general research like they can be great starting points um they're a great um place to develop a working knowledge and of like of the the subject you're doing um yeah so there you go develop a 
uh, knowledge of standard sources. The difference between primary and secondary sources. A primary source is a first-hand or eyewitness account or uh, letters, newspaper, that sort of thing. So for you guys, like a primary source would be... Um, so if you're doing like gender roles in Pixar movies, the movies you examine are the primary sources you are using. The secondary sources is everything written on like gender norms or childhood development about Disney movies. Like those Disney movies are your primary source that you are looking at and using to, to test your argument. But your secondary sources would be the articles and whatnot written. So a secondary source is an, al is an analysis of of information reported in the primary source so like yeah um so popular sources of information are newspapers uh things like that um some popular sources are specialized like the chronicle of higher ed and field and stream um but those are mostly your popular sources like magazines uh those sort of things websites that stuff um, newspapers. Secondary sources are written for, for experts in a particular field, um, like the New England Journal of Medicine would be an, a scholarly source. Anything printed in a specific journal that is um, undergone a peer review process, which means other experts in the field have looked at it to see whether or not it is up to snuff and they say so. Um, I know that's kind of problematic in its own sort of a thing, but yes, journals are the sort of thing. So like, if you want to look at... Um, the movies, the a journal of popular film and television might be one to look at for to find articles written about specific movies you want to look at things in, that sort of a thing. That's the big difference is scholarly sources secondary are like ones that are written by experts in the field tend to be peer reviewed or are peer reviewed and go through revision process like books written for the field, that sort of a thing. Um, they've got a bunch of things that will tell you the difference between popular magazines magazines have more ads than scholarly journals journals will have some um appearances of popular magazines are usually eye-catching and glossy like plain black and white graphics scholarly journals are boring looking audience is general typically not jargon heavy like more like just light surface area information uh Professors, researchers, and college students are usually scholarly journals. They'll have more jargon, more more depth. Uh, the journalists are the authors in popular magazines, whereas professionals in the academic field, doctors, people working on their doctorates, that sort of a thing, people with years and years of experience and knowledge on subjects, that sort of a thing. Um, bibliographies, usually in popular sources, are not usually full citation and may not exist at all, ex whereas... Uh, Journals have to give you an extensive bibliography and background. Um, content in terms of the difference, general articles to inform, update, or introduce contemporary issues are like magazines, whereas research projects, methodologies, and theories are usually in journals. And they're not introductory. They're giving you more deep information that is usually harder to understand without that base of knowledge that like you get while learning about the subject if that makes any sense um examples of these again newsweek national review pc world psych today those are all popular magazines whereas international journal of applied engineering new england journal of medicine popular uh, journal of popular movies and television those are all things like that like again specialized vo vocabulary language you'll see non-intellectual um usually a commercial publisher Professional organization, university, research institute, or scholarly press are typically um, aligned with journals. That's not to say that you won't find scholarly journals published by a publisher, and they may do that, and that's because that's a thing that happens. Um, yeah. All right. Again, you know. Consult your experts, develop working knowledge of the standard sources, distinguish your primary and secondary sources. Those will all be things that are helpful. Um, let's go to the next thing. All right, so. All right, they're, they're talking about here, um, they're talking about different types of searches. Um, 
before you might have gone into the library to see stuff but you can't anymore so like this little first section of go to your library and get familiar just kind of laugh that off because they just kind of want to throw books at you and tell you to leave now um so be wary of the internet sources um just out there on general because anybody can be anybody they want on the internet but you can find some stuff like john hopkins university project muse those sort of things have journal sources that you are are internet hosted things that are reliable but a lot of them are behind paywalls and you will find that um our libraries offer access to government records and um a lot of databases ourselves so that's why you'll have to go through them um we're gonna skip their little stuff here because i don't we don't have a system like theirs but we'll go on to keyword searches like uh um before that, oh yes, I wanted to add to the be wary of internet sources thing. Steal from those sources if they're wary themselves in terms of their writing, but they offer you access to academic information like Wikipedia because scholars have a thing against Wikipedia because it can be edited. It's usually fixed very fast with the misinformation, but um, Wikipedia is a great place to go start and steal sources to get general knowledge, that sort of stuff. Anyways, um Let's get back on track. Uh, keywords are key. So keyword searches, we already talked about this, like finding your topic and coming up with as many different sort of keyword searches as you can. So with like uh, race and popular culture, race, popular culture, race, television, uh, uh, yeah, uh, representation um, and popular culture. Those they're, they're, You would just come up with tons of keyword searches and that's what you kind of want to do is keyword searches will help is just combinations of words you can search that will help you find stuff on yours. Um, again, they have a, a great example. Um, I, I, they even talk about the source, use a the source to come up with other words and examples to, to, to find keyword searches. Um, well, we've talked about that in terms of class, like do Boolean searches, do those sort of things to get yourself keyword searches. Um, they have what is called browsing and we do too, but you can, you can slim your stuff down by looking at the, the subject terms and that sort of stuff. And that's what a browsing is, is it allows you to browse by subject terms. So you can pick out different terms and subject terms to do. And I'll show you that when we go on the internet here in just a sec for a quick rundown. Um, that would be a thing you could do. Um, that's another thing. That's how they do theirs. Um, what's next? I think what is next is once you've found your sources, like you want to want to find, uh, you want to evaluate your sources, like you want to evaluate the author's background and their credentials. What is their, what are their, are they a PhD? Are they an MA? Are they an expert in the field? Um, what's their purpose? What's their topic of discussion? The audience the author um, is writing towards and whether or not you are a member of that audience, the nature of the conversation, how others have addressed the problem that they have. That's a thing you would want to look at what the author identifies as uh, misrepresentations or gaps in knowledge and an argument that needs modifying or a hypothesis. You want to make sure that the author is saying something interesting or relevant and not just co-signing. Um, what the author's own view is, how the author supports their argument, do they do it well with primary or secondary sources or scholarly articles or versus journals uh, or scholarly articles versus newspaper articles, facts versus opinion, that sort of a thing. If they're heavy on opinion and non-scholarly stuff, you may want to dump that source for something a little better. Um, how accurate is the evidence? Can you find that information elsewhere? Make sure it's it's being like the statistics being cited are are relevant within the field and being used by others because you don't want a single author who's using their own set of statistics to just ruin your paper. Next, once you have found sources that are credible and you think they are, skimming is going to be your best friend. You're going to want to inter read introductory sections like a preface or a foreword. Um, you'll want to look at the uh, the chapters and the table of contents and the index and that sort of thing, more so to find relevant chapters to read and sources to potentially backtrack and steal. And it'll also save you time. So if you find a book that's on a subject of that's on uh, say environmentalism and it's only one or two chapters don't read the whole book just go read those chapters that sort of a thing that's 
That's why you would want to examine the table of contents and look for things, uh, again, with the notes and bibliographic references, things to steal. Um, you want to skim for the argument. You would do that by reading, like, topic sentences and stuff. Um, again, as they say here, um, read the abstracts or introductory sections, like an abstract serves a similar purpose as an introduction, so an abstract is usually 250 words long-ish, and then it's really short and quick, whereas a preface is a couple of pages, same with an intro, so you'd read that first, see if it's relevant to you, and then go from there. Um, they have an example here of a preface that you could read. Again, table of contents, look at that, look at the index, see what chapters are relevant to you, because the subject might be relevant overall, but only certain chapters are, so that would be a thing you would want to look at and grab. Um, check the notes and bibliography to uh, to steal arguments and steal sources. I mean, not arguments, sources. Sorry, to steal sources to 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 find new things that you can backtrack. Because as they talk about here, there's four different things, that, different articles that that author used in their book that you could then go look at to help build your knowledge and your argument. It's not so much you um, restating the author's argument and reusing their sources and just putting your name on it. It's you using other people's hard work to help you have an easier time finding sources and the things you need to gain knowledge and make the argument you're looking to make. Um, another thing you want to do is skim the argument, like topic sentences, read those, see what's relevant, because as they show here, there are many topic sentences that were on point, and that's the point of good topic sentences, is it allows people to help read your argument and skim your argument if they need to, if you've written, written longer pages. Um, that's it for that sort of stuff. Um, for books and longer things, books and journals, sorry. Lastly, we're going to talk about the internet and evaluating those sources. Like, treat everybody, uh, sources on the internet, like they're strangers trying to get you to get into their windowless fan that says free candy. Um, evaluate the author or the site. Make sure that the, the author... Um, the name appears on the website, make sure they're being as transparent as possible because if you see a website, like they have this, this example here, this Crawford guy, or no, Crawford explains, but the writer, um, never puts their name on the site, never really does anything to like, let you know who they are, their credentials, that sort of stuff. Evaluate that, evaluate the site itself, make sure it seems legit. And the person writing is being as transparent as possible. Um, also, look at organizations that potentially support the site or do support the site. If you're if you're writing on environmental issues and you see a site saying that BP has done nothing wrong, or you see a site that's saying that corporations aren't polluting as bad as we think, but then you can backtrack it to being supported by a big oil company, that's going to kind of let you know like the site is not necessarily on level. Look at who's supporting them. Make sure that who is supporting them is somebody who is a critical thinker, who's an expert in the, 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 the field, make sure that it's relevant, make sure that they're on the level. Um, again, make sure that the, the, you evaluate the purpose of the site, whether or not they're trying to inform you or persuade you or argue their own point. Um, if they're being candid about their own self-interest in a question, that's maybe okay. Um, but you got to look at the degree of objectivity that the author has. Um, sites like Wikipedia, um, they yeah, are, are okay for me, I think, to, to go steal from. But, yeah, see, because they talk about Wikipedia here as an example. It is more transparent than other sites. If they're not being as transparent as Wikipedia would, I would just avoid them as a good rule of thumb. Um, again, evaluate the information on the site itself, whether or not they are um, facts you can find elsewhere and are verifiable, or if these are things that are just existing in the vacuum of this one website itself um that's all for the chapters now we're going to go really quickly over the the search engines and library again um just because so i've already got this queued up so say i'm doing the bell hooks one and i want to look at the portrayal how race affects the portrayal of the poor in popular culture um those are two words that i can search popular culture and race i'll search those really quickly um as we'll see we're going to get probably thousands of hits well 70,000 that's a lot so we would want to we can start by looking at availability available at the library online peer review journals peer review journals is one that I usually would quick click on because most of those are articles available online you can also go full text online that'll be ebooks that sort of stuff and then available in the library keep in mind the library is taking a little longer now than it used to 
Um, you can look at like the JFK library or the Spokane academic library. Those are the two places they would be. Um, you can look at the format, you can pick articles, you can put, pick chapters, you can pick reviews, you can pick newspaper articles, you can pick entries. I would pick articles and book chapters for this to keep from reviews and sort of stuff. Date, you can change the relevancy. Say you want to go from 18, this is going to take forever. We would want to skim it all the way up to 1852 to stay relevant. Anyways, you can refine that way, clear it out. Uh, you can look at the locations of them, the physical locations, or you can see. So this is the subject browsing. Um, so say I want to look at popular culture just only. I would click on this, or I want to look at politics or history. I will click on these, and these will apply the subject term filters. So we've just picked a bunch of them, not really at random, but we went from 70,000 down to 14. And as we can see, race and sex in American pop culture, Risky Martin ain't no Dixie chick. Uh, Ricky Martin, sorry. Um, but as you can see, some of these aren't really relevant. T uh, teaching race and ethnicity in the age of Trump using popular culture. They are not really relevant. They are interesting. But let's see here if we go to... Uh, say if we switch in television... Um, we're going to get, say, 300,000, that's a lot more, watching race television, the struggle for blackness, channeling blackness studies on television and race in America. That's already one that's right there. It's at the library. I'd have to go pick that up. So you would probably take three or four days to get it, um, which sucks, but you could go get it. Um, but as you can see, just by switching one of my search terms, I've narrowed it in a little bit longer. Now they've got one, Living Color, Race, and Television in the United States. There's two books. One is 98, so still relevant. 2005, more recent, so it'll be more on the, the, the pulse of the current trends. Again, we can we can uh, do stuff here, so let's go ahead and go peer-reviewed journals online, articles, and book chapters. And then we apply. Let's go to the subject. Oh, no, we don't want physical location, but subject terms. Say we want television programs and social sciences. Boom. We hit all of those. That's sort of a way to thin this out and look at where we're going to go. We went from that. We went down to 10% of the searches. So the influence of anti-smoking. So again, not there. But as you can see, television and race are both in that keyword search. Crisis of communication. Traveling. Yeah. Time traveling in Dixie. Race. Document. Portrayals of race. Ethnicity on primetime television. Over a 20-year span. And the associate with national level. Right. Wow. There's a really specific article that you could use, um, and it's a social sciences issue. So this might be the statistics you would want to look at. So um, I'm going to stop there, but this is how you would use our library database, and we've talked about it, and I've given you that. You would use Boolean searches, that sort of a thing. Um, but you can look at book chapters, titles. You can skim everything. You can narrow everything down here on this left-hand side. Um, Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you guys are working well. Sorry for the lateness and have a good one.